Green Street Hooligans is a 2005 film that stars Elijah Wood and Charlie Hunnam and is directed by Lexi Alexander. This is also known just as Green Street in the UK, I'm pretty sure. It's also known in some parts of the world as just Hooligans, but in America it is known as Green Street Hooligans and that's how I've uh, first discovered it and always known it pretty much. Um, this is one of my favorite films, not my top 10, but I would feel very confident in putting this in my top 30 favorite films of all time. Um, watched it somewhere streaming way back in the day, close to when it came out, like 2007 or something like that. And uh, I caught it like in the middle and I watched till the end because I was very intrigued. I really liked Elijah Wood's performance. Uh, the only other things I really seen him in before this is Sin City and of course Lord of the Rings. And the film really, really captured me and captivated me. Uh, it's a very bleak and brutal film. Um, it swears a fuck ton. <laughs> so this has, uh, this merits an R rating for sure. And it's violent. Like, it's very, very violent uh, with the hooligan lifestyle and the, um, the football gangs of the UK and uh, the way it portrays them. Of course, it could be a little bit um, exploitive sometimes. I don't think it overdoes the exploitation at all, though. And of course, it can be um, a little bit, I'm not gonna say fantastical or um, uh, showy kind of thing, like the way it's directed, like it does wanna portray a lot of like action, like um, action forward scenes. It's it's a very dramatic film, but the director is obviously also going for like an action-filled uh, guy movie kind of thing. Um, like man cave film kind of thing. But it doesn't overdo that as well. I think it's very powerful in my opinion and has a really good story. Um, I absolutely love it. So, um, like I said, Charlie Hunnam, which everybody probably knows from Sons of Anarchy, and uh, Elijah Wood, of course, from Lord of the Rings, who doesn't know Elijah Wood. And... Uh, like a good cast that um, balances them all out as well. So this film starts right away with uh, a hooligan fight in a subway station uh, where one gang or hooligan gang, whatever, uh, firm they call it in the in the films, the British firms, British uh, football firms. Uh, one is led by Charlie Hunnam called the GST and they're fighting, I believe it's the GST, correct me if I'm wrong, it could be GRT, but I think it's GST. Um, they're fighting another gang, I'm not sure from where but uh, Tottenham probably, I think it was Tottenham. And they're egging each other on in the subway and then they start fighting and it's brutal, man. Like I'm telling you, they go like, they shove each other into telephone booths and uh, smash their people's heads through windows and they're all wasted too because they go to bars, they get as drunk as they possibly can and then they just get into gang fights, literally like sometimes five on 30. <laughs> it's ridiculous. And one guy at the beginning of the scene is slamming this other guy's head on this metal, um, like, like, um, fence pole kind of thing. And just smashing his forehead into the fucking thing. It's so, so violent. And like blood is splattering everything. It's like, these guys don't like, they don't hold back. There's scenes where people are throwing bricks at each other. Um, it's fucked. And then we are introduced to, Elijah, that's how we are introduced to Charlie Hunnam's character, Pete Dunham. And then we're introduced to uh, Elijah Wood's character, Matt Buckner. And uh, I did not take any notes for this film because I'm very confident in my review because I've seen this so many times. Matt Buckner um, is being kicked out of Harvard. He's a Harvard student and his roommate, uh, Jeremy Van Holden, Van Holden, I'm pretty sure, um, is the most stereotypical douchebag you can think of. He's the prep, he's got the tan khakis, he's got the button-up collared shirt with the adorable pink sweater, white sweater, whatever. He's got the slick blonde hair, he's got the smooth white skin. He's that guy that like talks all like, oh, I'm so rich and professional and my daddy got me into Harvard, but you know, he's like putting eye drops in his eyes because he can't, start, he can't stop uh, snorting coke in the bathroom. He's that fucking guy. We all know that guy. We all know that guy that just acts like, you know, daddy's a millionaire and, and mommy will get me out of anything, but, you know, I can't stop doing drugs, but I'm still perfect because, you know, the world sees me this way and, oh, I can't get uh, kicked out of Harvard because of my drug problem, so I'll pay my roommate $10,000 so he can take the bail and then I'll, I'll reward him later on. I'll give him ten grand, 
Elijah Wood, Matt Buckner. And, uh, you know, he can take the rep for me because I'm a Van Holden. I can't get kicked out of Harvard. That would, that would just be out of this world. That can't happen. And uh, he tells uh, Matt Buckner, he's like, don't worry, when I graduate, when I get my job, I'll totally hook you up. I'll get you the top position, whatever. You know, fucking bullshit. Go fuck yourself. Matt Buckner is all obviously like, you know, he doesn't have his street uh, smarts. And uh, he's a pushover at the beginning of the film, unfortunately, because he's a great guy in the film all throughout. Um, but he just he just gets taken advantage of because of his personality. Um, his sister... Um, Shannon, she moved to the UK to start a family with this guy named Steve. So she is married now in the UK. Uh, Matt Buckner, played by Elijah Wood, uses his 10 grand that he was given by Jeremy uh, as bail or, or bait or whatever, like bribe. There you go. <laughs> um, he uses that to go to the UK and spend some time with his sister. Over there, he meets this, uh, this guy, Pete Dunham, uh, played by Charlie Hunnam, and Pete Dunham is the brother of Steve Dunham. Steve Dunham is married to Elijah Wood's Matt Buckner's sister. Um, so Steve's brother, um, Pete, is this guy that we were introduced at the beginning of the film, this hooligan that uh, is basically right in the GST. Um, I don't know if they confirm that he's the new major, because every firm has a major, and it's not really confirmed if if uh, Pete Dunham is the firm, or sorry, is the major of that firm, GST, but he's definitely high up in the in the group. So uh, he meets uh, Matt Buckner, and <laughs> his brother Steve tells uh, tells Pete to take Matt to a football match uh, to kind of show him around and like keep him company and show him around his world kind of thing. And he's like, "Oh fuck off! You know I can't take a young to football." <laughs> so funny um and uh he bribes him with a hundred bucks and he's like just take matt to the fucking game and just you know entertain him for fuck's sakes and he does and then obviously they start you know slowly getting on each other's nerves because matt is a total american and uh pete dunham is a total brit and uh football fanatic obviously and um and <laughs> um Matt Buckner, you know, he doesn't know anything about soccer, and he keeps saying soccer, and uh, his favorite uh, uh, sport is baseball, and he doesn't he doesn't know anything about soccer, and he keeps saying soccer, and he goes, for fuck's sake, stop saying soccer! And uh, the banter back and forth between the two is, uh, is great. But they really start to bond afterwards, and uh, when uh, Pete Dunham takes Matt for uh, drinks at the local pub, uh, he starts to you know, warm up to everybody, and uh, Pete Dunham starts to really warm up to Matt and bring him into his world, and Matt, uh, throughout this relationship between him and Pete, um, really starts to find himself, and it's a film about, um, like, things that you just can't learn through education, and you can't learn through um, studying, like, there's just life lessons in general that you can only learn you know, st st street smarts, basically. You can only learn by experience, by diving into it. Now, this, like I said, it's a violent-ass film, okay? This is the extreme of the other side, all right? These people are, you know, they could die in these fights. Like, it's shit that you really don't want to experience a lot of times, but there's certain lessons, too, that are extremely valuable to Matt, and um, sometimes in life you really do need to go to the extreme, as extreme as you can go. There's a quote that Matt says in the middle of the film. Once you take a few punches and realize that you're not made of glass, you're not, you don't feel like you're really living until you're pushing yourself as far as you can go. And um, I really understood what he meant by that because at the beginning of the film, he literally did think like he was made of glass and he let everybody push him around. Even he let some douchebag, you know, ruin his chance at Harvard, the best university in the United States, maybe in the world, I don't know. But, uh, you know, and, and, and believed this, this, this rat, this, uh, this human cockroach of a fucking person. And, um, and, and you do sometimes have to dive into the extreme like he does with these, uh, with these firms and the things he learns with these, uh, 
these, uh, I'm not going to say they're gangs, because they're, I mean, they, you could call them that, but they're not necessarily gangs. They're more just um, football, <laughs> I don't know, football uh, extremists. You could say that. That would be a good way to describe them, football extremists. Um, football meaning soccer, not football meaning American football. Uh, for anybody who's confused, football with the, you kick around the ball, that kind of football. European football. Um, but yeah, um, and the street smarts he learns where, uh, Pete Dunham keeps telling him, like, you never run away, you stick your ground and you fight, you stand up for, uh, who you're with, your buddies, you're, you know, you fight till the death, you're, you're protective of, you know, you, you all, you, you stand for your team, you stand for your people, you, you don't pussy out, you don't run away, you stand and fight even if it means your life, you give your life for your boys. And um, this is things that he just never was able to experience or understand until he um, met these, these, these people. And, uh, and it's a good lesson in the, in the idea of it, not in like, you know, it's not good to fucking beat other people up to the death and crush their fucking skull in, no. But um, it's it's a valuable moral kind of lesson that uh, he really needed because um, the other side of it too, where he's just getting pushed around by everybody, especially a pussy as big as, as uh, Jeremy Van Holden, um, you know, it's it's totally... <laughs> It's totally the the opposite. Uh, it's not any better, basically, kind of thing. So as he's starting to become more respected and more appreciated, especially by uh, by Pete Dunham, there's this other guy in the in the gang uh, named Bover or Bova, Bova. Um, he is the douchebag of the film, and he's the guy in the firm that doesn't trust any outsiders, and he gives. Uh, Matt Buckner a really hard time throughout the entire film. He just hates Matt Buckner. And he really hates even more that uh, Pete Dunham is giving him all this respect because he's a yank. He's uh, as an American. He doesn't belong kind of thing. And he he's just a douche. This guy fucks so much shit up and for absolutely no reason because he betrays his own codes. He betrays his own firm, you know, um, for anybody who's seen the movie, and obviously this is a spoiler review, he goes so far even to go to the uh, the rival firm, the extreme rival firm, um, Millwall, and Millwall is led by uh, Tommy Hatcher, played by Jeff Bell, who's an absolute monster. Monster, monster. And you can't blame him too much because He's a very interesting character. He might be the most interesting character in this film. Um, Tommy Hatcher, played by Jeff Bell, um, 10 years prior, um, had his son basically trampled to death in a hooligan fight. Uh, the kid was 12 years old, and it's mentioned in the film that he raised him to be his little pit bull. And uh, during this hooligan fight, this massive, like, 30-on-30 30 30 hooligan fight after a, a Millwall versus GST game, or GST... GST, GRT, I totally forget if it's, <laughs> it's one of those, GST or GRT, um, during the fight, this kid got trampled, he's got his, like, skull crushed in, and after that, he just went absolutely insane and mental, which, who, what father wouldn't, especially when your son dies that violently, but also what father would bring a 12-year-old to a hooligan fight with bottles and rocks and bricks, like, you're raising your kid to be a little football, a uh, pit football, pit bull, um, when he's that fucking young, you you don't do that. What do you expect? You don't you don't do that, for God's sakes. And I like the twist too, where it's um, it's mentioned in the middle of the film or closer to the end that Steve uh, but Steve uh, Dunham, the husband of Matt Buckner's sister, was the the major of GST ten years prior, and that's when he left. Is when he witnessed that kid being trampled to death and he just said screw this I'm changing my life around and then he met the sister and married her and the sister swore that if he ever got to like went back to the firm that she would just bounce she would leave and he's I like the scene where he's talking with Matt Buckner and telling him like the the roar of the stadium and 
the the passion of the game just makes him want to go back so bad and just get wasted and plastered with his friends and just live that lifestyle again that passionate lifestyle i'm a big football fan as well um i don't look at whatsoever but i am uh full portuguese i'm portuguese canadian so both my parents and all of my grandparents are portuguese um i know i'm white as hell but <laughs> my background is portuguese i love portuguese football and i love football in general i'm i'm on game day, I'm a fanatic, so I understand exactly where these guys are coming from, and um, the passion of the game is real, if you can feel it. Um, lost my train of thought there for a little bit. <laughs> so I can understand where Steve is coming from, where he really misses that passion, but at the same time, it's totally uh, good that he left the, um, the firm to start a better life, because, you know, like, who wants to risk having their life taken? You know... Pete Dunham has a point with his stand at your ground and, and, you know, as the slogan says right on the film, stand your ground. It's true, but, you know, is the cost worth it? That's the question of this film. Uh, Matt Buckner learned a lot, but as I was saying before, sometimes you need to go extreme to come back to a balanced level. And I think that's what Matt Buckner... Um, benefited from the most by meeting Charlie Hunnam and his firm. But you don't want to stay there too long because I certainly wouldn't want my death to be my head smashed with bricks. <laughs> um, I will pass on that. Or like the dude at the beginning who has his head smashed on the fucking pole. That looks brutal. But, um, so yeah, you got Bova, uh, Bova, um, going to Tommy and telling him that the major, the old major, Steve, uh, Steve Dunham, who Tommy has really bad blood with and would kill, like, would murder half, given half the chance, and Bova's like, yeah, he's, you know, at the pub, just, you know, and he's with the, the Yank, the, the Matt Buckner who came from the U.S., and, uh, you know, it, it, he... <laughs> Tommy's like, uh, what's with, you know, the, what's all this bollocks I hear about the firm going international? Um, for anybody who's offended by my attempt at uh, British accent, I'm sorry. I don't take vocal coaching. I'm just trying. So <laughs> if you guys are offended, fuck off. I don't know what to say. <laughs> I'm trying. Um, but yeah, he's like, what's this? But the firm going international. It's all this bollocks I hear. Um, and... Uh, and then he, he, like, turns to the dude, like, talking with his girl. He's like, I'm trying to have a fucking conversation. And uh, goes up to the dude. He's like, hi, I'm Tommy. The guy's like, yeah, I know. I know. I well, see that's bad. That's really, really bad. Because now you don't get any fucking excuse to give your, your shit cunts quiet. <laughs> Jeez. British and the word cunt, man. British people and the word cunt, they say it so much. And then he grabs Buddy's head and he's just slamming on the table and uh, Bova's like, it's enough. And he's like, that's enough. I'll tell you and it's enough, all right. And fuck, man, the guy's just brutal. Again, you, you can't really blame him because he lost his son. But, I mean, the shit he does is just insane. And then he brings his gang, of course, all Bova's fault to the GST pub and with model of cocktails and lights the whole thing ablaze and stabs Steve in the neck and uh, tells him, you die here tonight, me, or you, me and you are even. And, uh, of course, Steve ends up in the hospital. Of course, now his wife has to leave him. And um, it's not explained. This is one thing that kind of hurts my heart is that it's not explained in the film whether his wife left Steve for good or temporarily because she said she does mention she's going to leave the next day because it's not safe for her in the area which is totally understandable um and she should and and anybody knows she should and she does but you know it's never said if it's permanently because permanently i just don't see why because he can go with her to america and start a life there and escape all this bullshit because obviously it's not safe for her she's gonna be killed and her son is in danger too because tommy's a fucking whack job and Bolvar's a fucking like the guy i don't know like i would i would beat so much shit out of that guy that guy just ruined so many lives including his mate his uh like uh pete dunham his mate's brother could have 
been murdered. He almost was. He went to the hospital and he was fine, but he almost was. He was stabbed in the freaking neck. Ruined his, uh, his mate's, uh, sister-in-law's wife. Or sister-in-law's life. Wife. Life. Um, just ruined so much because he, he just wanted to fuck, um, Matt Buckner up. And, and, and fuck him over and, and tell Tommy that, you know, oh, the Yank's over there, but so is the Major. And, uh, you know, like, the guy, the guy just... And then he, he does feel so much guilt, um, Bova. He does feel so much guilt. The actor, too, um, for anybody who's seen my latest um, What's in the Bag, Son, he's in a film that I watched for the first time, too, called Perfect Creatures, which is back here, I think. Um... Where is it? This bad boy right here. Um, yeah, Leo Gregory plays in this film. He stars in it. And I recognize him right away. I'm like, that's a guy from Green Street Hooligans. But uh, yeah, he's just a piece of shit. And, and he feels so much guilt. So, 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 so much guilt. But you can't feel sorry for him. He's drinking himself to death on a park bench. He's singing the... Um, the chant that they do in their firm, the song about bubbles, I, I forget how it goes. All the bubbles in the air, united, or something like that. Um, and, you know, he, he does feel like a bag of shit, but when you nearly kill your mate's brother, I'm sorry, like, you have no, you have no place in that gang. The gang is all about stand your ground and fight for your boys, and you rat the main guy's brother out and close to him being killed and then ruin their marriage and potentially have the, the like one year old or two year old kid. Like, I think he's really like, he can't be more than one. The baby. Fuck, man. Fuck. And then we got the, the final battle, which is beautiful. It's treacherously heart grabbingly brutal. Like, and a lot of it's a slow-mo, and you got, they're in this, like, uh, kind of, like, warehouse field kind of thing. And, uh, there's a song that plays by Terrence J called One Blood. Look up the song, it's great, unless you watch the film and you know exactly what I'm talking about. And, man, it's just gut-wrenching. Like, that's a tear-jerking moment right there. That's a, that leaves a lump in my throat. And they're fighting for their boys, and they're all standing their ground. And of course, Matt Buckner, who was told to leave Britain and just go home, and uh, Pete Dunham will take care of Tommy because this is his fight, not Matt Buckner's fight. But Matt Buckner, like last minute, is just like, "No, these are my boys now. I learned so much. If it wasn't for these guys, I wouldn't, I wouldn't know half of what I know. So no, I'm going, and I'm I'm risking my life for this, and um, and then." You know, the wife comes for some stupid reason to the fight to, to pick up her brother, Matt. Uh, I guess it's not a stupid reason, but it's stupid that she brings her son. And then they see her, Tommy sees her, and sends his boys off to, like, go mess him up. <laughs> but they hold him back and everything. And um, Matt Buckner, you know, uh, tries to uh, bring down Tommy and... Um, He's like, no, don't worry about it. My boys will take care of them. You can just, uh, and, uh, I forget, like, the the fight is just intense. Uh, you know, I'm sure people who are watching this review have seen the, the film, I hope. I hope you're not watching a spoiler review, especially for a film this good, uh, without seeing the film first. But, uh, when, when, uh, Pete Dunham tells Tommy, you should have been to protect him, mate. He was your son. That just makes Tommy snap, and he runs, and he brings him down, and he just starts saying this poetic uh, speech while pummeling Pete Dunham, played by Charlie Hunnam, in the face with both fists, and just crushing, crushing his face with, with clenched fists and not stopping. And he just lets out this painful grunt, like this... Like a stab, like you've just been stabbed, like this grunt, this this cry of pain and anger and anguish and suffering and just missing his son 
who died ten years before in a hooligan battle by having his skull crushed, and he's just giving it. And he's like, he made me feel sick. The vision, it just... And he says it kind of poetically, because what he's saying rhymes. And, oh my god, man, it is so brutal. It is so fucked up, and we all know that Pete Dunham dies there. He gave his life for Matt Buckner, you know, a yank. <laughs> and it's, and then I love the ending when he goes back to America and he runs into Jeremy Van Holden. And he um, goes to the bathroom where Jeremy Van Holden is snorting more, more coke. And he's like, you told me that once you get your job, you're going to give me uh, a, a high-end position. And Jeremy Buckner, the prick, is like, okay, just make an appointment with my secretary, okay? She'll, she'll make you an appointment, okay? Just fuck off right now and he has a tape recorder and he's recording the whole conversation of because he made him say what ha what the truth was that he that he was the actual like jeremy was the actual one with the coke and uh he's like this is my ticket back to harvard and then he grabs jeremy and he goes like this and me and i watched it with my aunt she said the same thing and i'm pretty sure everybody in that moment is just like just give him one just one just one just one, just one good one, just, just one in the nose, just one. But he just holds it and he gives him that look and, Jer and Jeremy Van Holen's like the little pussy. He's like, because he, he, he has no street, he's a little bitch. Just like uh, Matt was at the beginning, at least Matt was like a nice guy, but he didn't have the, the, the morals and the, and the passion and the, the life respect, the self-respect that he learned through this firm, through um pete dunham he just holds it and jeremy knows and he just lets go and he walks away and he just walks away into the night a new man and the credits roll and man this film is so good you have to if you if, if you've made it up to here and you don't care about spoilers you gotta watch this film just for the sheer passion of it uh <laughs> You know, it's obviously not everybody's going to like it. A lot of people think it's has bad morals because, you know, you know, glorifies violence and it's just a bunch of people getting absolutely ridiculous wasted and beating the shit out of each other. But I think it, it has a lot more meaning than that. And I think that it's um, it's a great story. And if you like football, that's a good enough uh, European football, I mean. Uh, that's a good enough reason to watch it on its own. But uh, I love it. I love this film. Um, I gave it a 4 out of 5. Um, like I said, I think I would be pretty confident putting it in my top 30 of all time. But uh, yeah, it's it's beautiful. Um, what a great, great film. Yeah, that's pretty much all I got. I was thinking of other things to say, but I think I pretty much covered the entire uh, gist of it and my favorite scenes, especially that final fight. What a glorious moment of cinema um yeah that's green street hooligans or green street or just hooligans in some places um i don't know if hooligans is like a bad word to say i, I don't that might be why they cut it out and just call it green street but i don't know it also spawned two sequels direct to dvd i haven't seen them i don't think they're gonna be as powerful as this i think they just stuck to like people in jail fighting each other and firms fighting each other. I don't think they have much story to them from what I've seen in the trailers anyway. But uh, Green Street Hooligans is such a high recommendation and I love it. Go check it out if you haven't. Um, and if you have, you know what I'm talking about. Subscribe to Morgan Film Fan if you like to listen to my voice or if you like my film reviews. I'll be back with more when I can, so stay tuned for those if you're interested. Until next review, have a good one. Take care and cheers.